boxing. There's nothing wrong with boxing. It's one of the great working class escapes is boxing. It's just a sport like any other. In fact, at its best, it's not a sport, it's an art form. Female topless boxing? <laughs> So which one are you rooting for, sir? I'm just playing that it goes the distance. <laughs> so anyway, Crichton brings Lister breakfast, but he refuses because he's uncomfortable with the idea of having a servant. Goodbye waffles, goodbye maple syrup, goodbye fresh cream, so long fresh strawberries. Bon appetit, Ben. That did sound good, didn't it? Not that good, though. Uh, Mr. David, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings. I love it when the show finds excuses to show Robert Llewellyn without makeup. In this case, it's the spokesman of the company who made Crichton. He's slow, stupid, crudely designed, and quite amazingly ugly. Announcing that Crichton will be shut down and replaced with another mechanoid. Excuse me. But as it turns out, Crichton is surprisingly at peace with it. The only truly terrible thing is that, as my adopted owner, you have to die with me. You what? <laughs> Joke. Deadpan mode. Here's another fact about how messed up this version of the future is. With AI being as advanced as it is and robots basically becoming self-aware, humans have been keeping them in line by having them believe in an afterlife called Silicon Heaven. The idea is that if they serve their human masters faithfully, their reward is an eternity in paradise. Pretty messed up, huh? There is no such thing as Silicon Heaven. Oh, then where do all the calculators go? Aren't you a pantheist? Yeah, but I just don't think it applies to kitchen utensils. I'm not a frying pantheist. <laughs> Fantastic little play on words there. Uh, for is it not written in the electronic Bible, the iron shall lie down with the lamp. And there's another one. Is so silicon heaven the same place as human heaven? Human heaven? <laughs> Humans don't go to heaven. No, no. Someone, someone just made that up to prevent you from all going nuts. This episode is quite the little analogy for religion. So he accepts a lifetime of getting the short end of the stick because he thinks there's going to be some big reward at the end? Not to the extent of waiting for God, but it's up there. Maybe we can find a shut-off disc and turn it off somehow. He's not a kit droid, Lister. He's not like that stupid thing Peterson bought on Callisto. We wouldn't know where to begin. Speaking of religion, we learned something interesting about Rimmer's family's beliefs. Seventh-day Advent hoppists. They believe that every Sunday should be spent hopping. They took the Bible literally. Unfortunately, their version had a misprint where it says, Faith, hop and charity. And the greatest of these is hop. That's a hell of a misprint. That's going to change in season 10. In fact, as cute as this is, I like the other one a lot better. So since there doesn't seem to be any way to stop what's going to happen to Crichton, Lister decides to throw Crichton a going away party. But Rimmer doesn't see the point. He doesn't like doing anything. Fun? Ah yes, the employment of time in a profitless and non-practical way. I also love it when they find excuses to have Rimmer do an impression of one of the other crew members. And general employment of time in a profitless and non-practical way. Hey, what is this? Build it yourself, Marilyn Monroe droid. I mean, look at the box. And look at the face that comes with the kit. Why the hell did they make it silver? Where'd you get it from? Peterson Yep, only three seasons in, we've already hit the ten count. Peterson gets more recognition on this show than Cat does. You think he'll try and seduce her? I don't think so. He's a bit like Action Man in that department. Just plastic underpants and a trademark. Well, that was a little more about Crichton than I needed to know, but I guess it's better than if it was the alternative. Sorry for the mental image. Thank you, Bob. I think that's the first time that Scudder has been called Bob, but it won't be the last. Is there anybody here? It's party time! So they throw Crichton a big party, complete with food and drinks made specifically for a mechanoid. It's oh, rather pleasant. Would anybody else like some? Oh no, it's lethal to humans. But it's probably lethal to androids, to be honest, but I don't think it matters since tomorrow you're gonna be... I love how Rimmer's party hat looks like Napoleon's hat. I also love Holly's cute little tiara, even though that one is just kind of random. It's a computer chip! Oh, it's the interface, sir! Cat's making the same face I make whenever my husband talks about computer stuff. The other gifts he gets are interesting. General George S. Patton once stopped off at an Italian field hospital and had his sinuses drained. This is his sinal fluid? It's one of your earrings! That's right! <laughs> it's the one you really hate! Oh, it's a little box that goes vzzzt. Oh, goodness me, it's Marilyn Monroe. If you say so. So, that was a thing that happened. It's those cute little flaws that keep a guy interested. <laughs> Sometime later, they are really drunk and the embarrassing stories come out. 
drank a couple of bottles of cheap red plonk and then went on a guided tour of the Eiffel Tower. I was okay until I got to the top, but then I couldn't keep it in anymore. <laughs> the story I got told was some pavement artist sold it to a Texan tourist, told me it was a genuine Jackson Pollock. <laughs> My first French kiss. <laughs> Oh, please don't, Rimmer. 14 years old. We went on holiday with my uncle Frank and his two daughters. Anyway, middle of the night, I woke up with his tongue stuck down my throat. It was Uncle Frank. He got the wrong room. He thought I was my mum. Yeah, that was all kinds of wrong. And now they're all depressed. I never had a mum. I never had a mum neither. Well, you can all have mine. <laughs> Everyone else did. And Lister reveals for the first time that he doesn't know who his parents were. A cardboard box underneath a pool table. Just abandoned in this pub. Again, wait till I'm season seven. This. There's a very real possibility that your parents were brother and sister. <laughs> That's funny coming from the guy who got French kissed by his uncle. How many toes have you got? <laughs> Ten! Yeah, on both feet. And that's funny coming from the guy whose entire race could be traced back to a single individual. Too bad Lister's too drunk to think of pointing out either of those things. He could have really had them. You were right, Cripe? <laughs> I think I feel a Jackson Pollock coming up. <laughs> so while they're all passed out, Crichton accidentally hits the play button and the rest of the video from earlier plays. Ten times stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Why would anyone want a robot that could do that? The ultimate machine. <laughs> so they all wake up with massive hangovers. What on a mind and shit? Three million years into deep space. Can someone explain to me? Where the smack got this traffic going. I don't really get the pylon joke. It must be a UK thing. It makes a comeback in season 10, though. In a way, I feel somewhat disturbed by this turn of events. And now it gets surprisingly deep. Last night, I quite clearly approached a state that could be approximated to enjoyment. Last night, for the first time in my life, I lived. One night, it's not enough. I want more. And Crichton reveals that it's not just an issue of whether or not he shuts down. The droid that's coming to replace him will destroy him if he doesn't, along with any humans who stand in its way. But everyone comes together and decides to fight back. You would gamble your safety for a mere android? Is this the human value you call friendship? Don't give me the Star Trek crap. It's too early in the morning. That's the line of the show right there. <laughs> I love that this droid that's meant to be a glorified cleaning and cooking machine looks like something that would make Robocop piss himself. I am the replacement. Yeah, they're a lot less brave now. He's programmed not to harm humans. Uh, excuse me. All right, Milano, the party's over. <laughs> I've had just about as much of this as I'm gonna take. But if you don't skedaddle pronto, you're gonna see a side of me you won't much like. Rimmer, there isn't any side of you that anyone does like. Too bad Rimmer isn't human. Neither is Cat. And apparently Lister doesn't count. I'm just doing my job. It's not my fault if I love it. Hold <laughs> on, oh, boys. You can't all die at once. Things are looking pretty bad. Stay on Silicon Heaven. It doesn't exist. Until Crichton That's causes him to have an existential crisis. No such place as Silicon Heaven. Then where do all the calculators go? Which causes him to shut down. No such place. Need. Do. His brain couldn't handle the concept of there being no Silicon Heaven. So how come yours can? I knew I was lying. No Silicon Heaven? Preposterous. Well, where would all the calculators go? And so ends the last day. I love this episode. Like I said before, I get a big kick out of the religion analogy. I love the Star Trek remark, and we get another really fun one-off character in Crichton's replacement. Also, this episode had some depth and weight to it, which was fairly absent in most of the other episodes of this season. Time Slides especially seems to be missing it. But honestly, my favorite thing about this episode is how everyone bands together and goes to bat for Crichton. Crichton really is kind of lovable, and despite how the other characters kick him around a bit, Rimmer especially, at the end of the day, they see it too. They love him as much as the audience. Sure, a lot of the fun of this series is seeing how mean these guys can be to each other, but it's kind of refreshing seeing their camaraderie come out. At the end of the day, they've got each other's backs, and that gives me the warm and fuzzies. I guess I don't have much else to say about this episode. It kind of speaks for itself. So I'll just put a cap on season three. Once again, thanks for sticking with me so far. Next up is a fan favorite, Camille. See you then.
Personally, I don't much like the 2X4B. I, I think it's a jerky middle name. I once knew an android whose middle name was 2Q4B. Oh, poor sucker. <laughs>